So this video is a request by a subscriber. I take the requests of my subscribers very seriously. And so, yeah, I decided to make this video, although I have already made a video on how to solve the quadratic equation by another method, but the subscriber asked specifically for the Ferrari method. And so uh, it's a very clever method. It's a very nice one. And so let's see how we solve the equation of this following form. So, of course, uh, the first familiar trick would like to suppress this equation. So uh, we could actually make the substitution x equals to uh, um, x equals to uh, y minus uh, a over 4. And then basically, when we substitute this in, uh, this x, then the equation that we obtain for x, that's a standard trick uh, with corrections. So when we open it up, this term actually disappears, the, uh, the cubic term. And so the equation for x is going to be, by the standard substitution of the following form, x squared plus p y, uh, plus, sorry, plus p x squared, of course. So this term is missing, plus um, q um, x and plus r equals 0. So we will assume that we've got this equation, this monic equation to begin with. And now what's the intuition behind the Ferrari's method? Well, suppose that we could write this expression that we have here, plus q x plus r, this is equal to zero. But suppose that we could have written it like some square, like, like x plus some uh, constant squared here, right? Wouldn't it be nice, uh, x squared, right? It would be terrific because then I could take the second root from here and I could solve for x. But of course, we see that this is uh, too naive to uh, to assume and we cannot assume it to work for a general equation because basically it means that the roots of this equation are very specific and they that this fourth order equation has two doubled roots, of course, because of this square here. So this cannot work in general. But what if, but what if we could write this in the following way, if we could write this as a difference of two squares. So suppose that we could write it as a difference of some x and plus some, I don't know, beta here squared. Maybe there is a chance to write it in this way. And why, well, of course, this is a more general expression. So we have here two, uh, two three parameters here. And why is the better? Well, of course, then if we would have this equality, then we could shift it to the other side, take the second root, then we would have, so, if it was possible, then we would have that x plus beta uh, plus minus equals to x squared plus c, right? And then we basically need to solve two quadratic equations and its roots, which uh, in general, yeah, well, they are different, uh, can be different, right? There is no limitations of the following way. Uh, so if we were uh, able to do this, then the finding of the roots of this quadratic equation would be equivalent to solving uh, these two quadratic equations, which we can do. So, and, and that's the essence of the method. So the idea of the Ferrari method is for this constant C, we'll actually choose X squared plus P over two here and plus some alpha, alpha is a degree of freedom. So if we take this expression squared, so notice what happens when we open it up. So it's X to the power of four, of four, of course. And then what else are we going to have? So it's gonna be twice uh, x uh, squared. So it's going to be uh, px squared, right? It's twice x squared times this, plus twice alpha, again, x squared. And then basically we need to, so we have each pair and we would have alpha p here, of course. So we've taken x to the power of uh, x, squared, x squared to the power of 2. And then all the other terms, we took this was this twice, and this was this twice, and this was this, we took it twice. And then the other terms that are going to appear here is p over two to the power of two and plus alpha squared. That's uh, that's it, we've opened the brackets. And so uh, the encouraging part here is of course that we have this part over here, right? That we've managed to reproduce. And so now we need to take this part and subtract those extra terms. And then we would have this expression. So in fact, what we have is that x to the power of 4 plus px squared plus qx plus r can be written as x squared plus p over 2 plus alpha all of it squared and then we need to subtract so basically uh, it can be easily verified so it's minus uh, here what we're going to have is this 2 alpha 
and here it's going to be x squared. This is the, this term that we need to correct for. So let's open the brackets with this minus. And then actually this we need to add this qx. So it's going to be here with a minus, but when we open it up, it's going to be with a plus. So it's uh, qx here. And there uh, we also need to uh, take care of those constant terms. So it's going to be alpha squared, uh, alpha squared here, plus p alpha and plus p squared over 4 minus r. It is this term over here. And this is it. So what we have here is a complete equality. Now, if we could choose alpha in a smart way so that this will be of this form, if this would be x plus some beta squared or something, if we could choose an alpha such that this expression is an entire square, then we've basically achieved the goal. Then we basically have equation of the following form and then solving the uh, quartic equation reduces to solving to, to uh, uh, quadratic equations. So that's that's good. That's good. We're definitely making progress. And so what's the condition for this to be of the following form? Well, the condition is, of course, uh, which can be easily verified. Basically, this this equation needs to have one double root. And so this gives us the condition that uh, uh, Q squared course minus four times here what we have two alpha. And this is alpha squared. Uh, plus p alpha plus p uh, squared over 4 minus r. Okay, this has to be equal to 0. Of course, it's just the discriminant of this quadratic equations, right? So it's a coefficient of x. This is our, like, b, right? So if we were to write this as a, uh, as a quadratic expression, then this is b, which is minus q, and all of it is uh, c, okay? So basically, we need to demand here that b squared minus 4ac equals to 0. And this is this equation, right? Basically, so you see b squared minus 4 times a times all of this has to be equal to 0. And so what we have here is a cubic equation for alpha that we need to solve. And so for the cubic equation, actually, any root would be sufficient here uh, that we can choose. Any root that we pick alpha zero of this equation would give us this the composition of the following form which is which is great and so uh, and so uh, of course uh, we can pick any root that we wish uh, just uh, for the general information every cubic equation has at least one real root so maybe it will be convenient to pick a real one but it doesn't really matter here but we can always pick even a real root for this and just let me, uh, as a sidestep, tell, tell you the reason for this. So every odd degree polynomial has to have at least one real root. Uh, and, you know, the cubic equation is of, uh, of odd degree. Three is an odd number. So it has to have at least at least one, uh, one real root. And the reason for this is the following one. So if we have x to the power of 2n plus 1 plus some uh, polynomial qx here equals, this is, this is our f of x, right? And q of, v, q of x is uh, a degree of uh, at most m. So the degree of qx is m or smaller. Then what will happen? We, of course, can assume that this uh, this is monic function, right? So as x tends to infinity, this will tend to, to tend to infinity. So at some point, it's going to be greater than 1, for example, at some, this, some m here. And uh, since uh, this term is dominating, so at minus infinity, t, it's going to be, uh, it will tend to minus infinity. So it's going to be smaller than minus 1 at some point here. So let's say this is m2 and this is, I don't know, minus m1. So at some point, it's going to be smaller than minus 1, right? Because it tends to minus infinity. And so here at this closed interval, at, one, at the one end, the function is positive because it's greater than 1. And at the other end, is negative because it's smaller than uh, minus 1. And since polynomials are continuous functions, by intermediate value theorem, we're going to have some root in this interval, which is going to be real. So every odd degree polynomial has at least one real root. So if we can come back here, we can we can choose if we wish uh, alpha to be a real root, but any root of this uh, of this cubic equation will work. So choosing any alpha zero, which is the root, then actually this expression can be written in the following form. So our equation becomes once we've solved for alpha and alpha 
is such that this is zero, then our equation becomes x, what we need to solve, which is equivalent with basically the composed it. So here we're having the alpha zero that we solved by solving the cubic. And if you don't know how to solve the cubic, then see my video on how to solve the cubic equation. And here we're going to have minus two. So if I decompose it, I take this two alpha outside. So it's two alpha zero, this alpha zero, and the double root, the double root of this expression. So again, I could take, uh, let me make it more clear again. So if I take this two alpha out of here, out of the brackets, basically it's gonna be, let me, you know what, let me write it in the following way. So suppose that I write this two alpha over here, and this is going to be over two alpha, and all of it divided by two alpha, right? And basically alpha is such that this uh, this part, uh, all of it, this is, this is zero. So basically the doubled root is Q divided by those uh, two alpha, the middle of this peak. So this, this root, so this expression for this alpha can be written uh, in the following way. So uh, I'm sorry for, for the, a bit mess here, but uh, this, this part over here, right? If I'll refer only to this, so it's gonna be, can be written as uh, two alpha zero. And here we're going to have um, X minus this uh, Q over two alpha zero, uh, actually four alpha zero, zero squared. So, and let us call this X zero. So it's gonna be x minus x zero, all of it squared. And this basically equals our original equation. So we need to solve this equals to zero, which means that now we have x squared plus p over two, plus this alpha zero that we obtained by solving uh, solving the um, okay, cubic equation equals to two. And here we need to use the square root of alpha zero and here plus minus. And so here we're going to have x minus x zero, which basically leads us to two. So it's x squared plus p over two plus alpha. And uh, one equation is gonna be, so it's two, the square root of alpha zero. So this plus minus, so one option is with plus, And then we have this. And here we have x squared plus p over two plus alpha zero. Uh, and here it's minus to square root of alpha zero, x minus x zero. So we solve those two quadratic equations. So we have here this root x one, and this is gonna be x two, and this is x three, and this is x four. And those are the four roots of this quadratic equation uh, solving by the Ferrari method. By the way, what I said that if we want to avoid complex numbers, then we could choose this alpha to be real uh, or pick it to be the real root, but it could be that this negative and then we have to deal with complex numbers anyway, but it's it's fun dealing with complex numbers. So this is how, in principle, you can solve the quadratic equation using the Ferrari method, which is a very clever one. So really hope that you enjoyed this video and hope to see you in the next one.